You've got the minutes of the previous meeting. Um, are there any additions, corrections? Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Motion's been made. Second. Seconded. All those in favor? <coughs> the motion uh, carries. Uh, we have some correspondence in front of us tonight. We have a, a letter from T. Egan regarding Elliott property. Uh, we have a letter from R. Yakabaskis uh, regarding the Elliott property. Uh, we have a planning commissioner's journal. And we have a conserving wildlife article. Um, Old business for tonight is uh, the Elliott Private Access Way Permit Resource Protection. Um, Donald Elliott is requesting a private access way permit and resource protection permit to make the lot buildable and construct a driveway for a lot located at 43 Hannaford Cove Road. Section 19-7-9 Private Access Way Permit and Section 19-8 Resource Protection Permit. Um, could the uh, property owner's uh, representative get up and bring us up to date on any changes, please? My name is Herb Gray, and I'm a consulting engineer for Mr. Elliott. Also here tonight is Steve Bradstreet from Edwards and Kelsey, who, uh, who did the final uh, drainage report. Um, since our last meeting, we've, we've uh, increased the pipe size from 12 to 15 inch pipe. Um, and uh, how that works, I'm gonna leave to Steve Bradstreet where he did the whole drainage report. Um, we've been also installed field inlets right in back of the pipe at the low point uh, of the road uh, to catch any storm water uh, flowing both directions to the inlet and they'll come out a 15 inch pipe. We've also called for geotextile fabric bags uh, for any pumping of water. The, the discharge goes through these filter bags uh, and uh, prevent sediment from going upstream or downstream. Because uh, when you install something through here, through a wetland, there's bound to be water that's gonna have to be pumped. And we have to make sure that we don't have any drainage going onto the abutting property. And we can also put a, put a pool in there uh, if we have to, to pump the water into the pool to prevent any sediment from coming down. We can do it with, uh, we can do it with hay bales, or we can do it with sandbags. Uh -huh. The low flow channels that they're talking about, uh, where we're excavating underneath the wall all the way to the ledge and coming back with uh, uh, type A gravel, uh, any little rivulets that come down through here will come down and come up and come out the type B under drain that we have and that will flow right through the 15 inch pipe. We've also added a note that the contractor will follow erosion and control methods as stated in best management practices by, by the Cumberland County Soil and Water Conservation District. And the latest date that I have on that is March 1991. Uh, the, the snow removal uh, for this access way as uh, we discussed, is you can have a dump truck and the snow removal and blow it into the dump truck and carry it off so that the snow will not uh, be on the abutting property. Um, we have a Bob Nally, the uh, road commissioner, and I went out and measured this site distance coming up through here. And uh, uh, we found that we had over the 150 feet 
uh, of sight distance coming down through here, and we bloomed up this area to show that the right of way of the road is here, and if that right of way all the way up to this entrance here is cleared, and, and the little spot right in here is cleared, that you will have a sight distance uh, for the road on that side. And that, that's the narrow one. From this one, when you come out on the east side, you can see almost all the way to the water. So there was no question on the sight distance on the east side. Um, and I think I'll let Steve take over and, and talk about the, uh, uh, the drainage report. That's all the changes I think that I've made since I last since the last time. Thank you, Herb. Uh, good evening, uh, board. Uh, my name is Steve Bradstreet. I'm a uh, vice president with Edwards and Kelsey. Uh, it's a Portland uh, engineering firm. Uh, just for those who do not know me, uh, just for a little bit of background, I have over 25 years of experience in civil engineering, uh, 23 of which have been in the Greater Portland area, uh, serving uh, the communities in Greater Portland. Uh, currently, I have uh, engineering review services with over five communities in the Greater Portland area, so very familiar with ordinance requirements, stormwater management, uh, and the like on private site developments for residential, commercial, and industrial developments. Also have uh, uh, recently had experience sitting on the committee of stakeholders for the main DEP in rewriting the new uh, Chapter 500 stormwater uh, regulations. So that gives you a, just a brief background of uh, my experience and my knowledge in the, in, uh, the stormwater and stormwater management. The uh, report that was prepared and submitted uh, had additional comments that were generated um, by Goral Palmer Associates or consulting engineers uh, dated August 14th. And what I'd like to do is uh, address those comments that pertain to the stormwater and also add a few items on the erosion control that um, Herb Gray actually touched on uh, when he was first up here. The first comment uh, in their letter regarding uh, the calculations, it appeared that, uh, that the impervious areas for the access drive, the new proposed driveway, and the uh, proposed home were not included or not totally included. Um, and that is, that is incorrect. All the impervious area, we obviously have to make an assumption for what the, the home footprint is and the additional driveway, uh, never mind just the access road, that would be required for that property. We made those assumptions for impervious area and included those in the calculations. And uh, those can be shown or spelled out uh, in detail if you so choose to see that. Um, but it was something that has been reviewed by the most associates, the town engineers, and uh, have approved. The second item in their first uh, comment was uh, in regards to the 25 year and the 100 year uh, storm depths at the culvert. The calculations, even for um, the existing culvert on the abutting property downstream, shows that water backs up from that culvert uh, from existing conditions. Proposed conditions, if you look in the report, show that, that even that existing culvert does not show any increase, actually shows a slight decrease, very minimal uh, in the stormwater flow and the elevations do not change. For the proposed con conditions with the culvert under the access way, when you concentrate flow anywhere, if you provide a driveway through any property and require a driveway culvert to promote and to conduct drainage from the upland to the, the low lying, uh, the lowland, you have to concentrate it to one area. Right now, the flow is going through an area that's like this. Uh, according to the calculations, it appears to be 50 feet wide. And those were the calculations that we used and that uh, Will Haskell confirmed. 
um, as existing conditions. Now that you have a road going through there with a culvert, it concentrates the flow. The elevation, because you're talking the same amount of water, a slightly increase because of proposed uh, the development, is going to increase. But it is, you're looking at a 25 year storm, a 100 year storm, it dissipates within 24 hours and is gone. This area through here also has been noted as being a 50 foot wide wetland. It has embankments that go from an elevation of 93 at the stream to approximately 100 at the top of the embankment. That's seven feet. The water elevation does not get that high. The, so this area is not um, with any of the development or the water that may build up behind this culvert is not adversely impacted, does not impact the buildable area. It's only in the wetland area. It's confined to that existing channel and uh, in our opinion does not have an impact on the uh, abutting property. In, uh, in regards to the, and that's sort of also the same answer, I guess, for uh, their comment number three, uh, which they said referred to response number one. That was my response number one. The geotextile fabric bags that um, Herb alluded to, um, they indicate that it only collects or stops coarse sand and not the, the very fine silts. Um, in, in talking with Herb before, that could be, he has enough on here with silt fence, with hay bales, uh, that can be uh, put around those, around the outside to collect the finer sediment. There can also be erosion control mix, um, berms that are put around there that totally filter these finer sediments um, and prevent that from impacting any of the abutting properties. And if that is a condition, that's something that we can also add in, in, in addition to just the uh, geotextile bags. The uh, low, flow, low flow channels, um, I believe, uh, are covered adequately. They are shown on here, the under drain pipe. Um, what's being provided under the retaining wall is a free draining material all the way up around the basins, around the under drain, and that would get into that under drain and then flow into the channel. So I, I believe that has been addressed by Herb on the uh, plans. As far as um, the contractor, we had noted on the plans, or Herb had noted on the plans, that the contractor to follow the best management plan, uh, practices, um, that can be changed to be March of 2003. That is the most latest re uh, uh, revision of that, and if it uh, noted on the plans, that will be revised to 2003. But a professional engineer in the state of Maine can stamp plans and certify that the erosion control meets those or that the contractor is in compliance or has to comply with those. It does not have to be specifically stamped or certified by any other uh, certificate for that. It can be uh, just the PE stamp and the contractor can be responsible for that because many of them are certified in that depending on who you have for a contractor. The snow removal, I think uh, Ferb did um, discuss uh, in regards to the removal of that and, and taking it off site. And as far as the uh, site distance is concerned, uh, has also addressed that um, a little bit differently than what uh, Mr. Haskell had provided for information on what the setback requirement is from the travel way, what the ordinance may require. But uh, Mr. Gray has gone out to the site with Bob Malley, and, um, and Bob has confirmed that the site distance there with the removal of those trees within the right of way uh, meets to his satisfaction. Um, so I think that also addresses uh, that uh, comment. Um, comment number 10 uh, is sort of the same as uh, one and three, and it's in response to uh, the stormwater and the elevation of the uh, stormwater upstream of the culvert, which I uh, explained in my response uh, to number one, that when you concentrate the flow, you'll have that um, initial concentration that does uh, rise 
2,500 year storm, but in any of the calculations with the 24 hours it's out of there, it does not rise to an elevation that adversely impacts uh, the wetland or the development or developability of any additional land uh, by the abutter. Any of the additional um, comments? I believe uh, Herb Gray has covered, and I think that with that, the um, comments on the stormwater I have readdressed. The just a, just a, a point uh, to bring out is that the calculations that Gore Palmer provided were based on our peak flow calculations. So, so they have accepted our peak flow calculations and our elevations that we used to determine those flows based on uh, their sheet saying that peak 100 year flow per EK uh, report. Um, so I just wanted to also point that out. Uh, if there's any questions in regard to the stormwater report or in regards to the actual design that uh, Herb can answer, we'd be uh, more than happy to address those for you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I guess it's time for us to sit down and talk a little bit about it. Has anybody got any questions of the presentation? Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'll direct this set to whomever will, will answer this. Uh, my first question is regarding to the geotextile fabric bags. Uh, what type of maintenance is required to those to ensure that they work properly throughout their, their expected life? Um, somebody could answer that question. Typically with any uh, erosion control measures, be it silt fence, hay bales, erosion control mix, berms, uh, check dams, or even a manufactured product like a silt sack, a uh, geotextile bag, uh, they are, there is routine uh, procedures um, for inspection after major storm events, uh, routine inspections weekly or daily depending on uh, the actual construction activity. And if those, it's based on the sediment that is actually built up behind them or within them determines when they have to be um, cleaned out replaced, and I'm not familiar exactly with the geotextile bag that uh, Mr. Gray has specified here, but I'm sure that there are manufacturer recommendations on does that get a quarter full, a half full, or whatever its useful life is before it has to be hauled off site, cleaned out, replaced um, on there. So there are recommendations by manufacturers from uh, manufactured ones. There are some items in BMPs as far as how far does silt go up silt fence behind hay bales and things like that for uh, cleaning out. Those are generally uh, specified in the uh, BMPs. Okay, and Steve, if I can, with a follow-up, um, what would happen if those were not maintained and the, and the, and the bags became clogged or full? What's a, what, what, what's a potential consequence in your opinion? Uh, if, if they are not maintained, then you would have uh, sediment transport downstream. Thank you. Question for, I actually think Maureen. Um, my understanding of site distance is something that exceeds the number I'm seeing of 150 feet. Could the town clarify what the town standard is for posted road, local road, of, uh, of what the required site distance is? I understood it to be in something greater than 150. That's good. Mr. Gray, while the town planner is looking, what is the posted speed along um, Hannaford Cove Road? Now, he and I have been out and it's in the subdivision order, but it's a schedule there. 
Yeah. About what the bones is to be and what the site is to have to be. Okay. And uh, it was quite a while ago when I was out there, so I don't remember exactly. I think I do have some past correspondence. I, 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 I do recall 25. I, I did not note it on the plan. If it was not on the plan, it probably should be added to the plan in terms okay. of information. No problem. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I just it was something. I, I recalled something otherwise. The private access way standards say that you need to meet the subdivision, the site distance standards in the subdivision ordinance. On, in the subdivision ordinance under the road design and construction standards, it says the road shall be designed to achieve a site distance in the range indicated in the road classification standards table. Mm -hmm. And I think the board's a little familiar with that table. It's the table that um, all applicants are required to use when designing subdivision roads. And I'm looking for that table right now. But it's a little different from your traditional okay. um, standards. And that may be where I'm getting... And, and if I, here we go, good. So this would be classified as a local road. Mm -hmm. And if you, and it makes more sense by thinking about where the road classification standards came from. Um, what the town was doing before we created this table is we had road standards that mirrored the standards in most other towns and were basically one step below state standards. And we ended up with roads that, um, I, to quote a former council, it looked like highways through the woods. And uh, so the road standards were revised based on town neighborhood roads that the planning board identified as what they would like to see in subdivisions. So these standards actually are lower than what you're used to seeing because the intent was to build neighborhood roads. And this is a local road. The site distance is uh, 125 to 150 feet. That is the range you're supposed to hit. Thank you. I have some <clears throat> questions for you also, if you want to go back up there again. I've been on this board for a fairly long time, but I still find all this surface water mysterious because I'm no engineer. Could you please visually show us exactly how the water is going to flow? Is it going to flow on the surface? Is it going to flow under the ground? Um, and is it going to land on the abutter's property? Okay. This is a... Uh a better plan for actually uh, showing the, uh, the area. The drainage area is primarily up in this location. It flows down through here. Let's pretend that the proposed access way is not there right now, which it isn't. But the, the thank you. The uh, Existing flow, uh, it's approximately the watershed area is around 2.3 acres. Um, so it drains this area, comes down into a low point, which is around an elevation of 93, 92 and a half. It flows through here, and it goes through an existing 15-inch corrugated metal pipe, fairly well corroded and rusted out, um, across the abutting property to the, uh, to the downstream. That's the general direction that it's this area, 2.31 acres, flows down the, the hillside, let's say, in, in this direction. Overland flow, primarily. Some of it does evaporate, some goes into the ground, into the groundwater. But in general, any rainfall, stormwater is on the surface. It flows in a channel or the wetland, gets to this culvert, throws through flows through the culvert and then downstream. That's the existing conditions. That takes into account uh, any of the existing dwellings that are here, their driveways and things that might flow into that area. With the proposed conditions, what you're doing is there's an elevation up here on the road of let's say approximately 100. At the channel it's around 93 and then it goes back up to 105 or so. So that and you can see it on the other plan that I had on the other side, or that Herb had on the other side, 
it goes like this, and the water flows in the channel. It's a large ravine, but it's uh, characterized by wetland uh, vegetation in the, ba in the bottom of it. In putting a driveway through there, putting a driveway through anywhere, um, you cannot keep the driveway elevation at the same elevation as the existing ground surface, one, because you'd have water flowing over it when you get to the low point, and two, you have to maintain the structure of the road that you're building free draining. So it does not have the frost heaves, it does not deteriorate with water buildup in the sub-base. So this road will be built up across here, as indicated in the design plans with the retaining walls and everything. But what that does is, how does this water get over here if you build the road up? You have to put a culvert in. It's, it's no different than a culvert that's at the end of your driveway. I'm assuming that you have a driveway with a culvert that's in the roadside mm -hmm. ditch within a right-of-way or not within a right-of-way. It's always designed to be placed so that it conducts water from upstream to downstream and keeps it going in the same direction at the same location. Right now, the channel is through here. We're putting a culvert right there. You don't want to put a culvert anyplace else and have to excavate and recreate channels. One, you're disturbing uh, additional area, and, and two, it's, you just aren't allowed to uh, by regulation. So you put the culvert in at the low point. So this water, now coming off of a developed site, a house with a driveway, um, some coming off of the road or the storm drain system in there, some coming off of the back of the, this property, the existing, it's still going through this channel, but now it's going through a culvert to get back into a natural area and through the exist, existing culvert downstream. So the drainage patterns um, have not changed uh, dramatically. Everything is still flowing down through this existing culvert. What we're doing is we're providing a driveway in there. What looks odd that everyone is concerned about is it's a retaining wall. It's no different than if they didn't have a retaining wall and they had a wider right of way and they had sloped embankments. It's the same as a driveway with sloped embankments with a longer culvert through there. You're still providing a structure to transport the water that is coming off down this embankment, down this embankment, in this watershed and bringing it through here. So the, the drainage patterns have not really changed other than you now have a new culvert here that you're collecting flow before it and then piping it through. Thank you. That was a very good explanation. Um, another question that I have, you're obviously a very reputable firm and so is um, Coral mm, Palmer. Palmer. And yet, now, now perhaps um, like appraising is more of an art than a science, perhaps this is also more of yes. an art than a science. Well. And perhaps it's not. I don't, I don't know enough, I don't know enough to say. Okay. But given the same parcel of land, mm -hmm. two reputable companies have come up with somewhat different answers. Right. And can you perhaps give us from your vantage point just so we, because we sort of have to weigh, you know, where, what is the, what makes the most sense in terms of this piece of land? Okay. Um, you're exactly correct when uh, any engineer looks at a piece of property that is being developed, they will design it slightly different than any other engineer. Is their way correct? In their minds, yes. In my mind, this is correct. Obviously, in their review, they have some issues with it. But if they were to look at this site and know they had to stay within this easement, they would not have much of a choice than providing something like this, possibly more costly, depending on what they might come up with. But it would have the same configuration of a driveway through here, because that's the only place you can get to, and then develop the site. Every engineer that would look at this project would come up with something that's very similar but is different, and every engineer that reviews it will come up with some comments to either defend their position or try to make the project better. So um, 
you are correct, everyone. Uh, it, it, it is a science, but it does, I like to think that it has some art to it because you need to take into consideration all the surrounding properties, all the, the woods, the vegetation, everything, because it's not just a, a road going in, uh, it's people, it's society around it that you have to try to also try to protect. Um, I might have strayed from that answer. Um, and now I've forgotten the second part of your, answer, your question. No, I, th I think you answered okay. my question well. I have one more, but I'll defer to let somebody else ask a question. Go ahead. Mark it in. All right. Um, if this parcel had the 30-foot the easement that the code prefers, yes. would this build up of the roadway be necessary or would there be then enough room to put ditches along the side and solve the problems a different way or would this still be necessary because this is a very unusual situation and to have to build retaining walls to uh, let me just look at the other plane on the other side anything with a wider easement will definitely would definitely be easier to construct in, um, 30 feet is still narrow. I mean, if it was 30 feet over a deep ravine and you're limited by uh, profile slopes of the driveway getting in, you want something that is safe, getting in and out uh, of the, uh, the road or the house lot, um, you may have to fill more to make that road safe. Or well, when you fill more, your fill slopes extend out farther. And if they extend out farther, you may even go beyond the 30-foot right-of-way, maybe even 50-foot. It really depends on how deep the ravine is. Um, there are, um, in here he has a 1% coming in, 2.5%, uh, and, and then coming up to a 10% at the uh, crest of the road. Uh, very uh, mild slope going out, mainly because he's taking a knoll out in here. This is a 105, I believe, knoll, and it goes back down to a 98 in the road. So that is being removed so that uh, we're able to come in at a, a lower elevation, thus reduce the amount of fill that would be required, thus reducing the limits of the work as much as we can. Um, yes, the design, uh, anyone could come up with a different design that may reduce the fill uh, but in 20 feet um, with that width of private way or access road um, very difficult to get away from not using retaining walls if you went with side slopes uh, through there you would more than likely go over the 20.67 foot easement width so that is a very limiting factor and to minimize the impact to both of butters, uh, the retaining wall was the, you know, the choice, the chosen direction that uh, Mr. Gray took. Thank you very much. Any other question? We have a motion. I have a question. Mr. Chairman, I, I understand that the public hearing was concluded last time, but on the board table, this will allow the applicant to present more information so that the others might have some opportunity to comment on the new materials that have been submitted. Mr. Mr. Chairman, why don't we have the gentleman step up to the mic just to identify himself for the record? Yes, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this opportunity to raise this request. We understand that the board closed the public hearing last time. The board then went into deliberations and then tabled this matter because it asked for more information from the applicant. Now that that additional information has come in, uh, we'd request that the board reopen the public hearing for a short, limited period of time just so that the two abutters, and I, my name is Chris Vaniotis and I'm here representing uh, the Egans, so the two abutters could address the new information. We would limit our comments to the new materials that have been provided. I would be willing to give you three minutes, but I want you to know that we did receive a letter. We received everything in writing that was questioned of the previous time. So, but 
if it's all right with the rest of the board. No, I would concur limiting the comments to yep. the new materials. We're yep. not and anything new yep. other than what appeared in the letters. We have plenty of comments. We, we, I we received three copies of it, so I'm right. sure everybody else on the board received it. We understand it's, it's, you have it all in writing, and we just want to address the new material on those. I think there were four points last time where the board had a 3-3 split on the criteria, so we'd just yep. like to address those. Uh, and I, I think maybe Will Haskell, our engineer uh, for Mr. Egan, is the most appropriate person to lead off with that. Mr. I don't represent Mr. Yokobaskis. He's without counsel at this point, so I wonder if he might have... No, he just wants to talk about the issues regarding the changes that were made Correct. this evening. Correct. I guess I will listen to him. I, okay. I think everybody else would be happy to listen to him. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Well. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, my name is Will Haskell with Coral Palmer Consulting Engineers. Uh, I'm also a uh, registered civil engineer in the state of Maine. Uh, I don't have quite as many years of experience as Mr. Bradstreet does, but I'm getting there. So, uh, um, I guess I'd just like to touch on uh, some of the new information that was received and some of the, the items that were discussed tonight, uh, primarily focusing on, uh, I'll start with the stormwater and I'll try and be brief uh, since uh, Steve reviewed his side of things and um, I will say that we uh, we do not disagree with his 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 peak flow calculations as he indicated uh, we do note that um, the proposed culvert and access drive will result in an increase in flow as I indicated in my letter upstream of that um, on the order of 0.9 to one foot uh, over what the existing condition would be today. Um, so th there is a obstruction of flow that is, is caused by this new roadway. And actual, if you, if you look at the letter by Oast Associates, uh, item number 10, he implies this in one of his, his statements where he says, uh, this is about halfway down through item number 10. The situation due to the proposed retaining wall and drive acting as a barrier to the flow from the upper reaches of the drainage area. So what's happening is this new drive is restricting the amount of flow uh, and, and reducing the, the peak elevations at the, the Yokobaskis driveway downstream and basically translating that, that ponded situation upstream of the new roadway. So I will leave the, leave the stormwater issue with that, and I will go on to a couple other items that I, I feel that are important. Uh, relative to the geotextile fabric bags, uh, those practices will be used during the construction of the new roadway. And we feel that it's important that those bags be located in the, in the right spot, if you will. Um, they really need to be located again because and combined with other types of practices because they I, do not... I, I understood that the applicant was willing to agree to do that. Yes. Is that, is that correct? Yes. Okay. But I think it needs to be identified on the plan as to where those are. I don't think the applicant would have yeah. a problem with that. Yeah. If, if, please correct me. Okay. Um, again, with the, with the, the snow removal issue, uh, there is a requirement in your ordinance, uh, 1979-D3, that requires a, a maintenance uh, plan for this. And just saying that the, the, the snow will be removed with a snowblower into the back of a truck, well, where is it going to be removed to? And uh, what guarantees that that's going to happen on a regular basis. So I think that needs to be incorporated into some sort of a maintenance plan that is required by your ordinance uh, based on that, uh, that section 1979-D3. Relative to the site distance, uh, we agree the site distance is now shown on the plan here. But based on the ordinance, the requirement is that the site distance measurement starts 15 feet back from the edge of the of Hannaford Cove Road, which, uh, as it's shown now, it only starts back around 7 or 8 feet. If you 
start 15 feet back, the clearing triangle uh, extends back into the Egan property as shown here. Here's the, the orange line is the site distance line shown starting 15 feet back as required by your ordinance and going 150 feet back up uh, Hannaford Cove Road. So you actually, the amount of clearing that needs to be done to maintain and, and create that site, site distance includes this little triangle here in green and orange that extends onto the Egan property. So we feel that currently the site distance is not shown in accordance with the ordinance as, as indicated in the ordinance and it will require some clearing on the Egan property, which is an encroachment. Dropping all my papers here. Um, the final items I guess I'd like to touch on are under my additional com <coughs> comments. Uh, one I brought up at the last meeting relative to the cut section, and I did note that the uh, post also noted that as well in their new review letter. And the the other item uh, it again goes back to the feasibility of constructing this this project in this narrow easement. And I believe Ost also mentioned this, that to me, to get a better feel for that, it would be better if the, if, if the applicant could get a letter from a contractor that indicates, yes, this can be constructed within that easement, uh, or, or no, the feasibility is it's going to be challenging to construct that within the easement. So I guess, to be brief, uh, those are my items of concern uh, based on the new material that is submitted. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Chair, there might be one I just have just uh, two minutes of your time. Either, or, I, I, you know, we didn't have a hearing this night, this evening, so. <laughs> You're very I, I'll be covered really quick. I just want to submit one more um, thing, and I was very impressed with uh, Steve's credentials, and I appreciate the, uh, the, the, uh, the force with which he brought it. I just uh, wanted to, as a homeowner, uh, just ask him, Steve, if you share with us where you live, in what town? In Gorman. In Gorm, okay. Um, I've lived here for 15 years, and I do, I am a witness to the fact that when my, my um, area backed up, it took more than three days to, um, to clear. So I think that has something to do with it. He also mentioned something I thought was rather eloquent, is about how people are involved in this whole equation. And, um, we did a before and after picture to show, and I think Maureen spoke it better than anybody, the title to this picture should be Highway in the Woods, because that's literally what we have to face as a butter. So if you would, um, if you just pass this around, this is the before and after picture um, to the sight lines that we'd be forced to look at. Could you just tell us if this is on your property? Sure, yeah, this is on my property. This is viewing toward the Egan property. Um, I don't know if everybody can see this. Um, but uh, this actually shows uh, the 15-inch outfall pipe that we've added um, to the uh, request. The uh, guardrails don't go as far as the plan, and that was an oversight, but I think you can use your imaginations to actually picture how the guardrails would extend. Also, it goes a little further up into the woods to my 28-inch oak, and it only shows here that it makes it up to the 26-inch oak. So, in, in all fairness, we felt that this would be nice to present to the board, just so you could get a view of how it looks I always had trouble picturing what this would look like, and I think this is the best representation that I could have. And I'm sorry to um, have spent so much time, and um, I appreciate your, uh, Thank you. your, your review. Thank you. Do you, have those do you have any other questions? We do, we do have those via email, too, those pictures, right? right. Same ones? Yep. We, we have this version. Both, both versions.
I have a question, uh, a procedural question. We've already made certain findings that were approved. Yes. Do, we, do we need to make? Yeah, we, we need to go through each item similar to the previous. I don't mind doing that. I'm just kind of curious as to why if we've already. Well, I, I, I mean, we tabled the matter. We tabled it, so I, I think it's important that we go through each I'm, one of them. I'm more than happy to. All right, sir. <laughs> Uh, and we're going to take each one, a vote separately on each one. Is that yes. the procedure? Okay. Um, I have a motion for the board to consider uh, certain findings of fact. Finding of fact number one, Don Elliott is requesting a private access way permit and a resource protection permit for a lot located at 43 Hannaford Cove in order to make the lot eligible for a building permit. The lot is 42,262 square feet and located in an RA district where the minimum lot size is 80,000 square feet. As a legal non-conforming lot located in the RA district, only one single family home is permitted by the zoning ordinance. The proposed lot will have only one dwelling and related accessory buildings and uses. Motion's been made, do I hear a second? Second by Mr. Godfrey. Um, any discussion? All those in favor, show by raising their right hand. Motion number one has carried. Um, Find, findings of fact, right? I'm sorry, findings okay. of fact. Finding of fact number two, based on the project plans, the proposed access way shall be located within a dedicated right of way 20.63 feet wide. This is a reduction from the 30 foot requirement and based on the comments of the fire chief in his memo dated June 16, 2006, will provide adequate ac access for emergency vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, the finding of facts been presented and second. Uh, all those in favor? Number three. Proposed findings of fact number three is designed on the plans the access way will be improved with a paved drive constructed with a sub-base, constructed with gravel meeting MDOT specification 703.06 type D with a depth of at least 15 inches and paved and having a width of 14 feet except where the wall will be constructed and a lesser width provided to accommodate a guardrail. The maximum grade within the first 50 feet of the edge of the street will be 5%. Pavement radius at the intersection with the street will be 20 feet to the west and 10 feet to the east. Seconded uh, by Mr. Keneally. Um, any discussion? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor? Motion carries. Number four. Um, the proposed finding of fact number four, based on the project plans, gutter drainage along the street will not sheet across the face of the intersection with Hannaford Cove Road. Uh, finding of fact number four has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Oh, finding of fact four. Findings of fact. Proposed finding of fact number five, based on the plans conformance with the turnaround design included in the subdivision ordinance, a turnaround is provided that meets the requirements of the fire chief. Second. Any facts been made and seconded? Uh, all those in favor? Find facts five carries. Proposed number findings of fact number six, the access way is located so that 150 feet of sight distance is available to the west with the removal of vegetation within the Hannaford Cove right away, an existing site distance exceeds 150 feet to the east. <clears throat> Finding fact number six has been made. Do I hear a second? Mr. Godfrey seconds it. All those in favor? I I, can oh, I have? You have a question? I'm sorry. Yes, I do. Maureen, I read that, um, not that I have it with me, but I read that subdivision chart fairly carefully, which is difficult to read a little bit. And also the regulation, it seemed to me the regulation said that you had to be 15 feet back to take the site distance if it was for a commercial road, but not a residential road. 
That's the way I read it as well. Okay. So I would just like to make that clear to the abutters that a residential road, you do not have to take the sight distance from 15 feet back. And you're welcome to read the ordinance. I read it several times just to be clear because you raised the question. Thank, thank you, Barbara, for clearing that up. So any other comments? And it's been, uh, number six has been made and seconded. Do I hear? Uh, uh, I'll take a vote at this time. All those in favor of number six, please raise your hand. Vote carries on number six. Finding of fact number seven. Our proposed findings of fact number seven, that the planning board finds that reducing the right of way from 30 feet to 20 feet, reducing the gravel base from 18 feet wide to 16 feet wide, reducing the travel way, travel way width from 14 feet to 11.5 feet, where the guardrail is installed and reducing the pavement radius from 20 feet to 10 feet on the eastern side of the driveway, promotes better neighborhood development and, and maintains access for any municipal emergency vehicle. Fine. Uh -huh. Do I hear a second? Second by Mr. Keneally. Uh, all those in favor? Four to, all those opposed? Four to one. Uh, number eight. Proposed findings of fact number eight, based on the memorandum from Code Enforcement Officer Bruce Smith, adequate disposal of sewage will be provided as evidenced by the submission of a completed HHE 200 form designing a septic system that meets the town sewage ordinance. Uh, number eight, finding of fact has been made. It's been seconded. All those in favor? Number eight carries. Number nine. Proposed findings of fact number nine. Based on the project plans, a building envelope is depicted wherein the house and accessory buildings will be located on the lot demonstrating conformance with the setback requirements of the district in which it is located and any natural constraints and that the house site will be buffered from abutting residential properties. Finding fact number nine has been made and seconded. Is there any questions? Any? Yeah, I, I, would, I would like to add that a note be added to the plans that nothing is ever to be built outside that building envelope with the exception of the roadway and utilities. Does anybody else have any feelings about that? That is a proposed condition. That's, oh, it is. Never, is. never mind. It's in there already. We're so, there. Any, any further Red discussion? No. All those in favor of number nine, please uh, raise your right hand. Number nine carries. Finding of fact number 10. Number 10, based on the plan components, including installation of a 15 inch culvert under the proposed driveway under drain pipes to collect micro channel water flows. The project will not materially obstruct the flow of surface or subsurface waters across or from the alteration area. Second. Number 10 has been made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Number 10 carries. Number 11. Based on the analysis of impervious area to be created and the estimated increase in flows, the project will not impound surface waters or reduce the absorp absorptive capacity of the alteration area so as to cause or increase the flooding of adjacent properties. Second. Number 11's been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? It's always me. Um, I'm really in a quandary about this because I, I respect the opinions of both firms who said it. And rather than sticking my neck out and saying that it won't, I'm going to have to vote against it. Any other discussion? I'll take a vote at this time. All those in favor of number 11? All those opposed? Number 11 carries four to one. Um, number 12? Based on the stormwater calculations submitted by the Edwards and Kelsey engineering firm for the two 25 and 100 year storm events, the project will not increase the flow of surface waters across or the discharge of surface waters from the alteration area so as to threaten injury to the alteration area or to upstream and or downstream lands by flooding, draining, erosion, sedimentation, or otherwise. Do I hear a second? 
Uh, finding of fact number 12 has been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Uh, and all those in favor, please uh, show by raising your right hand. And all those opposed? 12 carries, uh, number 13, please. Based on rare plant and animal habitat maps prepared by the state of Maine, the project will not result in significant damage to spawning grounds or habitat for aquatic life, birds, or other wildlife. Second. 13 has been made and seconded. All those in favor? 13 carries, number 14, please. Based on the plans, which included details on the construction of retaining walls for the proposed driveway, the project will not pose problems related to the support of structures. 14 has been made. Do I hear a second? Second. 14 is made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, 14 carries, 5 0. Number 15, please. Based on significant aquifer maps prepared by the state of Maine, the project will not be detrimental to aquifer recharge or the quantity or quality of groundwater. 15 is made. Do I hear a second? Second. 15 is made and seconded. All those in favor? Number 16, please. The project area does not include coastal dunes or continuous back dune areas. 16 is made. Do I hear a second? Second. Made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor of 15? 16. 16. I'm sorry, 16. <laughs> I'm losing it here. Number 17, please. Based on the building envelope placement and size delineating the portion of the site that will, be that, will be, that will potentially be developed and the plans for the driveway construction, the project will maintain or improve ecological and aesthetic values. 17 has been made and seconded. Any do I hear a second? Second. 17 is made and seconded. Any questions? I do not see how this driveway in any way improves the aesthetic value of the neighborhood. I wish that people had been able to work out a better solution. Any other discussion? I'll be, it's been made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor, please show by raising the right hand. All those opposed? Number 18, please. Based on the plans indicating a minimum 60-foot setback of any proposed structure and the wetland, the project will maintain an adequate buffer area between the wetland and adjacent land uses. 18 has been made. Do I hear a second? Second. Made and seconded. All those in favor? 18 carries five. Zero. Number 19, please. Based on the plans indicating the use of silt fencing and hay bales, the project will be accomplished in, in conformance with the erosion prevention provisions of Environmental Quality Handbook Erosion and Sediment Control, published by the Maine Soil and Water Conservation Commission, dated March 1986, or subsequent revisions thereof. 19 has been made. Do I hear a second? Second. 19 has been made and seconded. Any uh, discussion at all? All those in favor of 19? 19 carries five. Could I ask a question? The, the discussion that was had about the, um, those bags, yes. does, that re um, does that relate to that at all, or is there anything? The, well, there was a request that something else be I added. Think, I think that could be covered, and my intention would be to cover it in yes. the most, in the, right. Approval or disapproval motion. We haven't, oh, okay. we haven't got fine. that far yet. I think we but need to be as mindful as possible. I understand that, but that's a okay. change. No, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Yep. Any, I'm happy. Any further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? 19 carriage 5 zero. Um, Number 20, please. Based on the HHE 200 form depicting the design of a septic system that was approved by the code enforcement officer, the project will be accomplished without discharging wastewater from buildings or from other construction into wastewater treatment facilities in violation of section 15-1-4 of the sewerage ordinance. Second. 20 has been made and seconded. All those in favor? 
There is five zero. Number 21, please. The project is not located in a floodplain area as depicted on federal FEMA floodplain maps. Second. 21 has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Carries 5 0. 22, please. The application substantially complies with section 19 7 9, private access ways, and section 19 8 3, resource protection regulations. Second. 22 has been made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Carries five. Percent. Sure. Uh, I have a motion for, for the board to consider. Uh, I move that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Don Elliott for a private access way permit to make the lot buildable and a resource protection permit to construct a driveway across a wetland for a lot located at 43 Hannaford Cove Road be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the plans be revised per the town engineer's letter dated August 9, 2006. Two, that a note be added to the plan limiting activities outside the building envelope to the installation of the driveway and utilities. Three, that there be no alteration of the site nor issuance of a building permit until the plans have been revised and submitted to the town for approval. Uh, and four, uh, that the plans be revised to reflect the um, geotextile fabric bag um, the location. Con control practices be clarified. The location of them on the plans. On the plan and that the filter bag location be shown on the plan at a distance of 50 feet or more from the wetland to avoid unnecessary sedimentation of the adjacent wetlands. Is that acceptable? Should we read it again? Read that one once more. Hmm? Read that one once more. Sure. This is uh, during construction. You're right. going to be working right through the wetlands, and that's primarily where they're the low point is that you're taking water out of or trying to control the water and the right. sediment right. in that area. So it has to be in the wetlands or very close to the wetlands, but not uh, discharging or um, impacting the wetlands from the discharge of the... Uh... I, I need to... Go ahead, Maureen. You want to be right? I, I think what was suggested that, is that the, in addition, that first of all, are the geotextile bags located on the plan in a specific place right now? Yes. Okay. That's it. Yeah, they are. They can be located on the plan. So, so, I think so the, we, the plan would you need, need. You need to show them on the plan in a specific and I, location. And I did. And then they need to be supplemented as necessary with hay bales and silt fencing in order to collect the fines. Right, but who's gonna who's gonna delineate that? Well, I would require the applicant to revise the plans to show that, and then okay. they would have to be submitted back to the town, and we would have the town engineer review them. <laughs> At the same time, he's reviewing all the other things they have to do from condition one. That was going to be my suggestion, is to have the town engineer review that as part of his. Do you want to reread re it? I'm sorry? Can you reread it? No. <laughs> 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 Frankly, I'm going to amend my motion, uh, condition number four, to reflect the planning director's, uh, planning, uh, town planner's comments. Um, to show that on the plan and that it be um, that once those revised plans have been uh, submitted to the town uh, engineer that he approve that sedimentation control measures those okay. sedimentation control measures so just to review that uh, I'm confident they can work it out yeah but just that that we need it in here is a, right I mean, my motion is over and, and one of the things that's in there that's important is that it has to be approved by the town engineer correct is that, yes. okay so would you read that just one more time? I, I don't think I can pull. Go ahead. Can Maureen read something? Or how, about, something? how about I try this? Right. That, that the plans be revised to show the location of the geotextile bags mm -hmm. and that hay bales and silt fencing be added to supplement the bags to control transport of fines to abutting properties. In, in the town engineer. Well, in the wetlands, right? I guess that would be a budding property. Did you say that it should yeah, well, be approved by the said, town engineer? Yeah, I said that the plans be revised, and and number three says three says, says that, you can't that do anything he can't. The plans have been submitted. Right, he's okay. not going to get a building. But we permit. switch three and four around. That makes it a little clearer. 
I don't have a problem with that. That's a good idea. Yep. It seems yep. like number three should be the last. No, it's, it usually is, but when you add to the bottom. Well, I was supposed to start enumerating it last anyway, and I didn't. All right, is everybody clear on the motion? Any more discussion? <laughs> yes. Second. More discussion? No. no, no okay, no. so the motion's been made and seconded. Do we have a second? Second. Yep. I'll bot Jack that. So, hearing no more discussion, I raise it to a vote. All those in favor? The motion carries by five to zero. Thank you. And thank you very much, and thank you very much for your input. I think it resolved a couple of problems that we had tonight, so. Okay. Are we uh, we hear a motion to uh, adjourn? Motion's been made to adjourn. All those in favor? The uh, evening concludes. Well, this meeting concludes. You were talking about it's been made. <laughs>